Are you wondering how to mirror your iPhone to your TV, your PC, or your Mac for live streaming, for screen recording, or just for viewing it on a bigger device? Well, we've got you covered with the best ways to do it in this complete iPhone screen mirroring tutorial. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now there's three primary use cases for wanting to share your iPhone screen, and we're gonna show you how to do them all. The first one could be you're looking to share to your computer for live streaming or recording walkthroughs. The second one could be that you're looking to share your phone screen so that you can monitor what's going on on your phone for doing things like recording using the back or the primary camera on your device. And the third one could be that you're looking to get your videos or your games from your tiny screen over onto a big screen, like a TV in your living room. There's actually a few different ways to do each of them, and each one has some advantages and disadvantages. So I suggest sticking around to make sure that you get the easiest one for you. All right, so let's get started. Now this first one is for Mac only. Now don't worry if you are on PC, we will get to a Mac and PC alternative next, and then we'll get to the big screen TV stuff after that. So the first option, option number one, is using your lightning cable and directly connecting your iPhone to your Mac, opening up QuickTime, and then selecting File, New Movie Recording. Then down the bottom next to the Record button, you've got a drop down arrow. If you select on that, then you should see your iPhone listed there. Now, if you don't see it, you may need to look over on your phone and either allow or trust the device. And you also might need to make sure that your phone is unlocked at that time. Once you've done that, you'll see that QuickTime is then displaying your phone screen. Now, this will automatically switch between portrait and landscape if you do rotate your phone. And this is going to be a great option for anyone looking to get the best quality video recording from their phone screen over onto the computer. You can also use this method and using QuickTime to record your phone screen and save it as a file on your computer as well. So if you're looking to record, this could be a great option for you. Even if you're looking to live stream, once you've got your phone showing up in QuickTime, depending on your live streaming software, you should be able to screen share your computer screen or screen share that QuickTime window into your live streaming software, bringing it into your live stream. So if you're looking to live stream, this could be a great option for you as well. Now there are a couple of downsides or at least a couple of things that you need to be aware of. The first one obviously is that you are connecting your phone directly into your Mac. So if you do need to move your phone away or you've only got a short cable, that could be limiting for you. But also you need to be aware that if you are recording your phone screen and saving it as a movie file on your computer, if you do rotate the phone between portrait and landscape or the other way around while you are recording, Recording, it will stop the recording at that point. So you will need to start another one. Now this is just something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker, but if you weren't aware of this and you just thought you were recording throughout an entire video, it would be a pain to realize afterwards that it stopped at the time that you rotated your phone. So just something to be aware of. On the recording side of things, you also don't have a lot of control to be able to dial in any settings or recording settings. Um, so if you're looking for a heap of control over the bit rate and quality of the recording, you're not gonna get that with this method. But also note that this is the highest quality recording that you will get in mirroring your phone screen into your computer. So even though you don't have those advanced features, you're gonna end up with the highest quality, which you can always compress or drop down using your video editing software at a later date. And obviously the other downside to this would be that you need to have a Mac. If you don't have a Mac, then this option is not gonna work for you. But some of our next options are going to solve a lot of these downsides from this method. But to round it out, this is a great option for someone with a Mac that's happy to have their phone cabled in, that's looking for the best quality recording, or looking to easily bring in their phone screen for live streaming as well. The second option I've got for you is for Mac or PC, and it's using software called Reflector or Air Server. Those are the two best options out there for mirroring your phone screen over onto your computer. And again, Mac or PC. So what you do is you go and grab either Reflector or Air Server, and you install that on your computer. You don't need to install it on your iPhone. You just then need to make sure both your phone and your computer are on the same wireless network. You can then enable screen mirroring from your iPhone just by swiping up from the bottom, selecting screen mirroring, and your Mac or PC will be shown there 
as an option for you to mirror to. Once you select that, your phone screen is going to appear mirrored over on your computer. Again, this is going to work in either portrait or landscape, and both Reflector and Air Server will let you do a recording of this as well. And one of the big advantages of this is if you are rotating your device and switching between portrait and landscape while you're recording, neither one of those is going to stop the recording at that point. So it's already one step ahead of the previous option with QuickTime. Now with both of these apps, Reflector and Air Server, you do actually get to control what the recording format and quality is actually like. So you get to choose the resolution, you get to choose the frame rate, and there is a heap of other options in there in regards to that recording quality. Now, just the same as the QuickTime method, option number one, once your phone screen is mirrored to your computer, you can also use that screen to be brought into your live streams as well. You can either select it as a source or add it on a second screen or second monitor and select that as the source to bring into your live stream. Again, depending on what live streaming software you're using. So one of the biggest advantages with this method is that you're not needing to connect your phone directly into your computer. It's done over wireless, so which means it gives you a greater range of flexibility if you do need to pick up and move around or walk around to get some distance from your computer. Both Reflector and Air Server will also let you transmit multiple devices onto your computer this way as well. So if you wanna connect more than one device at a time, both of these have that functionality. So this method of using Reflector or Air Server is great for anyone with a Mac or PC, someone looking to get their phone screen wirelessly onto their computer for either just viewing and monitoring what's on their phone screen. So if you are going to be shooting videos using your iPhone and you're going to be using that primary camera, this could be a great way to do that without the need for any cables or wires or anything attached to your phone. This is also great if you're looking to record your phone screen directly into the computer, or if you're looking to live stream or broadcast your phone screen using your live streaming software. Now, some of the downsides with this method, if you do have patchy Wi-Fi or your Wi-Fi connection isn't the best, you could have dropouts and issues with that. It's also not the highest quality because it is coming over Wi-Fi. Now the quality is good, but it's not as good as directly connecting your phone into your computer and using option one or even the next option that we have for you. Now in regards to Reflector versus Air Server, which one should you look at? Both of them, as we've said, will work on Mac and PC. Both of them will let you do everything that we've covered and mentioned here so far. Reflector, you can pick up for $14.99, whereas Air Server is $19.99 for a consumer license. So there's not a lot of difference between the two price-wise, but Air Server does have a lot more options than Reflector. Now, personally for us, we use Reflector, we've been using it for years and we think it's amazing, but if you are someone who's after the more advanced options, then you could definitely check out Air Server. So that leads us into option number three. Now option number three is another Mac only solution, but this time the software that we're talking about is called Ecamm Live. So this is going to be perfect for anyone who wants to have the most amount of control and flexibility for live streaming their phone screen through their Mac. Now the way this works is very similar to option number one, where you are directly connecting your phone to your computer using the lightning cable that came with it. But instead of using QuickTime from there, we're now going to be using Ecamm Live. So once you connect your phone through to Ecamm Live, it'll actually show up as a video source inside of Ecamm Live, making it so easy to bring it into your live broadcasts and even control a lot of the settings and the way that it looks while you're live. This method will work in both portrait and landscape and will let you change between the two while you're live streaming as well. Now, while Ecamm Live is primarily designed to be live streaming software, you can also use it just to save a local file of a recording. So you can use it as just recording software if you'd like as well, with obviously a lot more control and features than QuickTime. So really this method is the best way and the easiest way to bring your phone screen into your computer for live streaming or for creating a local disk recording or presentation as if it was live. Now in regards to the downsides or the things that you need to be aware of, once again, the biggest probably limiting factor here is that your phone is going to be cabled into your computer. It means that the quality is going to be the best it can be, but also that you may be limited depending on your needs and requirements uh, by having your phone directly connected 
to the computer. Now in regards to pricing, there's two options that you've got. They have a standard plan, which is $12 per month, or they have a professional plan, which is $20 per month. But really the standard plan will let you do everything that we've mentioned in this video. And that leads us into option number four, which is once again, a Mac only solution. So sorry, PC people. Uh, this is using software called ScreenFlow. So this option is going to be great for anyone who wants the most amount of control to bring their phone screen into the computer for recording video tutorials. So ScreenFlow is amazing software for screen capturing, screen recording, or even for video editing. It's a full blown video editing suite as well. And it does support screen recording your iPhone screen, but also having it in sync with any webcams or with your computer screen at the same time. So if you're looking to record your phone screen, again, in either portrait or landscape, and with the ability to switch between the two while you're recording, but also have that automatically synced up with your webcam or your computer screen, then this is the best way to do it. So it's amazing for creating tutorial content, for creating courses, or anything where you're showcasing even an app on your phone. Now the way that this works is just the same as the Ecamm solution and also QuickTime. This will only work if you are directly connecting your phone using the lightning cable into your computer. And once again, once it's all plugged in and connected, inside of ScreenFlow, you'll have the option to select your iPhone screen for recording. Probably the most powerful thing in doing your screen recordings this way in ScreenFlow is that not only are you able to record things like your webcam and, and computer screen and everything else, but it actually records them all to separate video layers. Meaning that if you wanna make your phone screen full screen or you wanna have a picture in picture of you down the bottom corner while you're presenting and while you're running through a tutorial, all of this is recorded in full quality then you can mix and match and change the shapes and sizes of all your different video layers or video inputs afterwards in your video editing. And again, that's where ScreenFlow will also let you quickly edit all of this stuff down. Now, as for the downsides or the things that you need to be aware of for this method, they're not deal breakers, but you don't get a preview of what it is that you're actually recording, of your phone screen. You can't see on the recording window in ScreenFlow that your phone screen is actually recording. Now, only one or two times out of all the times we've used this have we actually had any issues. So there's no peace of mind that you can check to see that your phone screen is coming in correctly until you press stop recording. Now, most of the time this works fine, but it would be nice if you could preview and make sure while you're recording that everything is actually recording fine. And the other potentially limiting factor is that once again, your phone isn't connected wireless it will be cabled in, but again, that may not be a deal breaker for you. Now, as I mentioned, ScreenFlow is Mac only, and it does sell for $129, but if you are looking for screen recording software with the ability to bring in your iPhone, but also as an amazing editing tool as well, then it is an absolute no-brainer at that price point. And that brings us to option number five, which is Apple TV. Now, Apple TV is a great way for you to mirror and project your phone screen onto a much larger display, like a TV in your living room or even a large computer monitor. So Apple TV is a hardware box that you plug in through HDMI to a computer monitor or a TV. Now, obviously Apple TV is so much more than just screen mirroring, but hey, it supports screen mirroring, which makes it one of the easiest ways to get your phone connected up to a big screen. Once you've got your Apple TV connected to your TV or to a monitor, all you need to do on your iPhone is again, swipe up from the bottom, select screen mirroring, select your Apple TV, and your phone screen is going to be mirrored. Now this will work in either portrait or landscape, so it's gonna be good for either playing games on the bigger screen or even watching movies and those sorts of things. Now the connection between your iPhone and the Apple TV is done over wireless so both your phone and the Apple TV will need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi connection now obviously if you do have patchy Wi-Fi or bad Wi-Fi where you are then that could affect the performance or the quality that you're able to see through and you might have dropouts and those sorts of things but if your Wi-Fi is solid then this is going to be a great option now this method is not going to let you record your phone screen this will only let you mirror or reflect your phone screen onto a bigger device now there's a couple of different models of Apple TV starting at hundred $49 or starting at around $179 if you're after the 4K version. But when it comes to screen mirroring or screen sharing, you're really not gonna notice much of a difference between the two. So those are your options for mirroring your phone screen to a TV, a PC, or a Mac, whether you're looking to live stream, screen record, or just make your phone screen bigger, put it on a bigger device. Now, there's two videos linked on screen. The first one will show you how to create the best quality videos using your iPhone camera. 
The other video is a YouTube recommendation. I have no idea what it is. I hope it's good and I'll see you in the next video.